Hello everyone and welcome to the Gymnast Scrims exhibit for this year's Picnic Day event. So Gymnast Scrims and the Tree of Life are down here, um, represented by this cone, um, and their, close, um, their closest relatives here are the flowering plants. So what are Gymnast Scrims? The word Gymnast Scrim itself means naked seed, and this refers to how the seeds are presented in the cones of these plants. And a little bit about cones. These are structures that bear either seeds or pollen. And seed cones, like the one on the right here in these familiar pine cones, are structures that bear seeds in between these um, individual seed scales. So here the seeds are not protected by ovary tissue like in a flowering plant. So if you think in a fruit, maybe a blueberry or a pear, you would have these seeds that are surrounded by these, this fleshy tissue. This doesn't happen in gymnosperms, hence the naked seed aspect. Um, here's just a little bit of diversity in um, seed cones. We see that there's a um, fair amount of diversity in both size and shape of these cones. And these look a little different from the pollen cones, which are cones that are um, specialized for producing pollen. So um, in a lot of gymnosperm species, these pollen cones disperse pollen to the wind, but I'll talk a little bit about some examples where um, some exceptions to that in some later slides. Um, and right now in Davis, a lot of the pine trees are producing pollen-bearing cones. So as you see here, a flick or maybe a strong breeze will trigger these cones to release large clouds of pollen into the air. So gymnosperms include well-known organisms such as pines, redwoods, and spruces, and they often form really dominant components of landscapes. So if you hike up into the High Sierra, you might find yourself looking at a uh, at a landscape like this where um, most of the where you have lots of these pines and these spruces. Additionally, if you drive a few hours north along the coast, you might find yourself in a foggy forest dominated by Douglas firs and redwoods as shown here. Gymnosperms also form really iconic components of landscapes in other parts of the world. For example, in, um, we have Parque Conquillo in Chile where the landscape is dominated by these monkey puzzle trees. Um, and this was actually used as a filming site for the 1999 documentary, um, Walking with Dinosaurs. So, so far, all of the gymnast rooms I've shown um, have these sort of needle-like leaves. Um, you might be familiar with pine needles, but that's not the case with all gymnast rooms. For example, we have these cycads. These are similar, these look almost like palm trees, but palm trees are true flowering plants that are related to grasses, whereas these are gymnosperms. And here, um, individual leaves are like fronds, so they're pretty long, and they're subdivided into, into, um, into smaller leaflets. Additionally, we have a truly unique um, leaf morphology in the ginkgos, so, um, or I should say ginkgo, as there's, only, there's currently only one species. But um, ginkgos have really unique fan-shaped leaves that aren't found in any other um, seed plant. So we can see that gymnosperms include a wide diversity of some interesting members, in addition to some really familiar plants. The gymnosperm lineage is around 300 million years old, which is older than the dinosaurs. And for such an old lineage, you might think that the members are primitive or maybe basal, but that's a really inaccurate way of thinking. And I'm going to briefly explain why. So here we have the tree of life. If we think about this horizontal turquoise bar below as sort of the passage of time, all currently present um, organisms exist in the current time represented by this vertical bar. All organisms originated from a most recent common ancestor shown here with a triangle um, at this earliest branching point. And this horizontal, there, this vertical bar represents the time at which this most recent common ancestor was present. So as you can see, every organism has evolved for an equivalent amount of time since diverging from this most recent common ancestor. As an example, if we trace this line leading up to the bacteria lineage. Um, it's the same length as if we traced these um, horizontal lines leading up to the monkey lineage. So said, all currently existing organisms have evolved for an equivalent amount of time since they diverged from this most recent common ancestor. The gymnosperms exhibit a lot of complex ad adaptation to the environments that they live in. Um, and I'm going to go over a couple of examples. Before I begin, I'm going to define this term, convergent evolution. And this is a phenomenon when unrelated organisms evolve similar traits due to adaptations to similar selective pressures. 
As an example, here we have sugar gliders and flying squirrels. So both of these organisms look really similar, but sugar gliders are marsupials um, found in Australia. So they're in the group that contains kangaroos and koalas, whereas flying squirrels are North, America and North American and they're true squirrels. So they're in the rodent family. So even though these mammals are separated by um, millions of years of evolution, they look really similar because they both live in trees and gliding from tree branch to branch is really advantageous for them. So an example of conversion evolution in gymnosperm, between gymnosperms and angiosperms is animal dispersal. So as you might know, plants don't, are unable to move by themselves and they often rely on the services of animals to help spread their pollen or their seeds. So fruits have evolved for this um, function in animal dispersal. For example, you have a berry that a bird might come and eat. The bird will digest all the fleshy parts of the berry, but the seeds will pass through its gut unharmed, allowing the bird to move on and spread the seeds of the plants to some distant location. And here we have several instances of fleshy cones and gymnosperms. So these three examples here, a juniper, here a ginkgo, and here an ephedra are um, gymnosperms whose cones look really, really similar to fruits. And just to talk a little bit more about the ginkgo, um, the fleshy parts of these cones smell of butyric acid. And really, this is a fancy way of saying that they smell really bad. So they're often described as smelling like rancid butter, but I can say that they smell a lot worse. Um, and you might wonder, what is the purpose of this? Like, who are, what um, animals are they trying to attract? Um, and several carnivorous mammals have been found to feed on these cones. So in their native range in China, leopard cats um, have been found to feed on ginkgo cones. And actually, ginkgos that are planted in North America have been found to be um, eaten by coyotes. So the fleshy area, parts of these cones might be mimicking running flesh, which is a really neat evolutionary story. Another example of convergence between gymnosperms and flowering plants is animal pollination. So as I said earlier, a lot of gymnosperms utilize wind to spread their pollen, but we actually have cases of animal pollination. So for example, the cycads and a few other gymnosperms, they use insects to move um, pollen between plants. And that's really similar to what flowering plants do. Furthermore, in a lot of these cycads, they use smells to lure um, pollinators to their cones. And here we have a really cool example of sort of extreme convergence between a gymnosperm and flowering plants. So this is Needham. And at first glance, you might think that this is a flowering plant. It has these broad leaves, has these cones that look like berries. Um, additionally, these are insect pollinated. Um, and if you cut open their stem, their, um, their physiology, um, their, the structures that they use to transport water are really similar to those used by flowering plants. So you might think that Needham is more closely related to flowering plants as it is to, than it is to other gymnosperms. But actually, if you use the DNA of um, a gymnosperm to create a phylogeny, you can see that Needham falls out over here um, as opposed to a branch right off of the flowering plants. You can see here that Needham is actually more closely related to a pine than it is to a flowering plant, even though it has a really similar morphology in many aspects to flowering plants. To finish off, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite organisms. Um, and the phylogeny of gymnosperms, it's over here. So it, um, its closest relative is Needham. So this is Wolwischia mirabilis, um, and, which is found only in the Namib Desert of Southwestern Africa. And if you look at this plant, you might be thinking, what is going on here? So it has a really unique growth habit. Um, it only produces two true leaves in its entire life. So when the seeds sprout, as shown here from the UCSB greenhouses, um, they produce two seed leaves, but these quickly die. Um, and afterwards, um, what happens is just that these two leaves um, continue to elongate. And other than producing cones and getting a little woody at the base of the plant, no other developmental features occur. Plants can live to be hundreds or even thousands of years old. And as they age with wear and tear, their leaves might get a little raggedy or ripped. So they might create the illusion of having more than two leaves. But in reality, these are just two leaves, one here, one here. And um, in the Namib Desert, they often form these really impressive displays. Um, they just look like a giant pile of leaves. It's truly a spectacular and crazy looking plant. So hopefully today I've been able to convince you that gymnosperms are really cool organisms and that you've learned a little bit about them. Thank you so much for attending this exhibit and I hope that you can check out the other ones. Um, my name is Jason. Um, you can contact me at this email if you have questions and 
Yeah. Thank you again.